I bid you welcome to this episode of the Blue Toad Murder Files. I will be your narrator as you investigate the mystery of Rivel Manor. Now then, how many players are there? Choose your Blue Toad detective. This is Little Rivel. Here in this seemingly innocent, innocuous corner of our green and pleasant land, the sacred tranquility has been irrevocably shattered by dastardly deeds, deadly doings, and by murder. Your holiday here had only just begun when you were witness to the abrupt and violent demise of the man of Little Riddle. Despite interference from one Inspector Bragg, your investigation uncovered four suspects. With skill and determination, you sought out the truth Uncovering the guilty party, the Miller. However, he was killed even as he confessed, snuffed out before he could identify his accomplices. What secret is concealed in Little Riddle that's worth the lives of Mare and Miller? The forces of dark villainy seek to thwart you at every turn. Can you defeat them? It's time to return to Little Riddle. So, let me get this right. You ignored everything I told you, interviewed all my suspects, then went around whipping up hysteria in the village, and stumbled across the truth of the matter, by which time the villain, or villains, were alerted and were able to snuff out the unfortunate Miller before he could help with my inquiries. Do I have that right? I think I do. Inspector Bragg is not very happy. Before he can continue, however... <gasps> Inspector Bragg! It's her ladyship, the manor! The puffing policeman explains that Riddle Manor has been burgled, and its owner, Lady Snobbish, is in some distress. Blue Blood takes immediate precedence, and reluctantly, the inspector lets you go. Don't think I'm done with you yet, oh no. I'll deal with this, and then I'll have some more questions for you. Do not leave town. You have no intention of leaving. There are murders to avenge and mysteries to solve. Sometimes there may be more than one place you need to visit. You can press left and right to explore the other possibilities. With the local police focused on the robbery at Riddle Manor, the windmill, scene of the most recent murder, is open to investigation. That no one has investigated the murdered Miller's home is obvious. Within moments of beginning your methodical search, your expert eye spots something trapped beneath the grain sacks. There is a picture trapped under some sacks of flour. Can you correctly move them to retrieve it?
I bid you welcome to this episode of the Blue Toad Murder Files. I will be your narrator as you investigate the mystery of Riddle Manor. With the local police focused on the robbery at Riddle Manor, the windmill, scene of the most recent murder, is open to investigation. That no one has investigated the murdered Miller's home is obvious. Within moments of beginning your methodical search, your expert eye spots something trapped beneath the grain sacks. There is a picture trapped under some sacks of flour. Can you correctly move them to retrieve it? Miney, huzzah! Gosh, you got through that one, lickety split. You made that look easy, not an error in sight. Well done. Please take this moment to look as smug as possible. There's no time to examine the photograph further, nor continue the search of the windmill. You hear sirens approaching. Pocketing the picture, you promptly propel yourself through the window and away. Perhaps there's still time to see if the burglary at the manor is linked to the deaths of the mayor and the miller. Arriving outside the opulent and ancient edifice that is Riddle Manor, you're greeted with a courteous but firm invitation to leave immediately. Oh, I'm sorry, really. I'm under strict orders from the inspector not to let anyone in. He... Well, he mentioned your name in particular. I'm sorry. I can't let you in the front at all. Huh? Not through the front. Huh? I'd back away if I were you. Huh? If you know what I mean, I'd go round the back of the house if... Oh, um, well, yeah, you know... Taking the hint, you walk out of sight of the house, then work your way around the back. Whilst it's true there are no policemen around, there is the little matter of the devilishly tricky Riddle Manor maze. The terrifyingly taxing topiary stands between you and the information you seek. When faced with many routes, a solid plan of action is required. Can you work out what the maze looks like?
drum roll. Splendid. You're finished. That was quick. No mistakes made, too. You great big spot. Look around you and be comforted. You are better than they. Having successfully navigated the horrible hedgerows, you emerge in sight of the stately home. There, taking tea on the veranda, you see a cowed Inspector Bragg and the regal figure of Lady Snobbish. And you say those were the only items taken? Yes, Inspector. That's what I said. Yes, Mum. If you could just confirm the descriptions again, I... I am not in the habit of repeating myself. Is there anything else you need to know? Yes, Mum. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, if you could just tell me if you had any visitors today. Certainly. The vicar visited to discuss my giving a eulogy at the mayor's funeral. The colonel was there also, very briefly. He wished to walk with me to the village green or around the pond or some such nonsense. That will be all, Inspector. There was the matter of... Uh... That will be all, Inspector. Oh, Yes, Mum, that, that will be all. Uh, I'll be off then. <laughs> Sharpish like. Thank you, Mum. Uh, I'll be in touch when we find your... Good day, Inspector. So nice to have met you, just this once. Though it's been a pleasure to watch Inspector Bragg being so thoroughly trounced, you have work to do and must away. There are suspects to interview. Another crime has broken the tranquility of this picturesque village. One that will require both observation and deduction if it is to be solved. Although you have only two suspects at this juncture, I think it wise to make sure you are paying sufficient attention. Let's see if you can answer these questions. You are the reincarnation of Sherlock Holmes, or these questions are too easy. Wonderful work, either way you look at it. That's enough questions for now. There is much for you to be getting on with. Little Riddle Church, where people come out of mindless habit to expunge self-inflicted guilt and to make sure their neighbors haven't got better hats than them. Vicar Goodman greets you with open arms. Damn sinners on thy knees beg ye for forgiveness in the sure and certain knowledge that none awaits those who repent not to Tank Tang. Mentioning you'd heard he'd been at the manor, you ask the vicar what he's been doing. In between dire warnings and calls for repentance, the vicar explains that he'd asked Lady Snobbish to deliver a eulogy, though he doesn't seem to think it will work. Then it he may be snatched away or forever confessing his sins to the bringer of madness. I mean, forgiveness. Here I have been since I met the lady, seeking enlightenment from this morning's collection plate. Perhaps if you help him, he might be more forthcoming with information you actually need. The vicar wants you to work out exactly how much each pew donated. Can you use his information to identify how much each person gave?
Did you show intellect or idiocy? Correct you are. Well done. My, my, my! Weren't you in a hurry? With Nary, a hiccup. Well done. Look around you and be comforted. You are better than they. Ah, glory to the sleeper beneath. That is not dead which can eternal lie. <coughs> Sorry. Many thanks. Now, to what questions do you seek answers? You explain about the burglary and that you are wondering if he had seen anything unusual. I have seen many things. Strange colors out of time. Glimpses of worlds beyond and strange geometry. Of the mundane, nothing. Moses, our groundskeeper, was with me. Mayhap he saw something. Leaving the vicar to mutter about sunken islands? You seek sanity and answers elsewhere. The vicar, though clearly a few pules short of a congregation, did mention that he'd visited the manor with his groundskeeper, Moses. Your welcome to Moses' home is muted, to say the least. Hmm. Yes, quite. Looking round for a conversational gambit, you spot the open book and ask what he's been reading up on. At least that gets a reaction. Hmm. It's all about the watering. It's what keeps the garden going. Just got to work out which are the right cans for the job. See? Here. Moses has been making notes on the plants around the churchyard. He's trying to carefully calculate an efficient watering system. Perchance if you help him, he may be more forthcoming. Moses' plants each need a specific amount of water, not any extra and not any less. Can you place the watering cans in positions that will satisfy every plant? Here. Miney! Splendid! Gosh, you got through that one! Lickety split! With Nary, a hiccup. Well done. You deserve so much more, but this will have to do. Mm, that's right. So, what is it you want? You tell him the vicar mentioned that he and Moses had been at the manor and that the place was burgled at some point that day. Had Moses seen anything? Hmm. All I saw was weeds. Weeds where there is no right to be any. Weeds needn't dealt with. Uprooted. Hmm. Well, wasn't that fun? Perhaps try interviewing someone more talkative next time. A nice gatepost, perhaps. The lady of the manor mentioned the colonel had paid a visit. Her tone was not complimentary, but then snobbish by name, head up where the sun doesn't shine by nature. You find the colonel easily enough, but before you can say anything... I say, you there, help step up now, that's the ticket. Now then, ducks, been giving the old grey matter a bally good thrashing. Still can't work them out. Have a gander, see if you can sort them out. Oh, I say, a gander, what? Ha ha, jolly good. Well, yes. What on earth is going on? You're not going to get any further with the Colonel until you've had a look at these ducks of his. The Colonel is watching the ducks on the pond, trying to work out which ones need reinforcing. Will you be able to observe which color has the least members. <laughs> Ducks! 
Drum roll! Splendid! Gosh, you got through that one, lickety split. Oh, and aren't you the smug one? No mistakes. My, aren't you terribly talented? Well done. I say, top ho, that sorted the little blighters out. So, what can I do for you, hmm? Speak up now. You explained that you heard the Colonel had visited the Lady of the Manor. Before you can go on? Absolutely. Damn fine filly, what? <laughs> Widow to boot. <laughs> Up there, all alone. <laughs> Just not right, don't you know? Think of it with a chance, eh? <laughs> so, what about it, hmm? You explain about the burglary, but get no further. I say, rum do and no mistake. And here I am doing blooming puzzles. Stand aside. Milady needs me. Tally ho! With that, the old coot is off. As little riddle slips from day into night, your investigation too must wait until morning. With three suspects, it seems likely that you may have already met the thief. And I'm curious to see how much you have picked up. Let's see if you can answer these questions. That clean sweep of questions puts you most resoundedly in my good book. I'm sure a new day will bring new questions. Maybe a trip to the police station would reveal new leads. And don't forget to eat breakfast. Investigating on an empty stomach would be most unwise. On arrival, Inspector Bragg rushes to meet you. The fact that he is so infernally happy does not bode well for your investigation. I see news travels fast here. Real sharpish. <laughs> Come to congratulate me, I suppose? Looks like I beat you to the pinch half the hall. I got a jump on the Blue Toad Agency. <laughs> You resign yourself to having to ask what the good news is. I've only got and found the missing items from the manor. Well, technically, someone else found them. Well, technically, and brought them over to us because they'd recognized them as being from the manor on account of them having been there before. And they delivered them during your tea break. Thank you, that'll be quite enough. And it might not have been all of them. Anyway, we have them, and you ain't getting a sniff of them, or where they were found. Constable, kindly escort all non-police personnel from the premises, if you please. The constable escorts you out, but slips something into your hand before he heads back in. With a nod and a wink, he's gone, leaving you with another mystery. The note the constable has given you seems illegible, but he has provided a hint with it. Can you cross out the letters that reveal the message?
you show intellect or idiocy? Splendid. You're finished. That was quick. You made that look easy. Not an error in sight. My, aren't you terribly talented? Well done. So, the stolen objects were recovered from outside the butcher's shop. Time to get to the meat of the investigation. Inspector Bragg went to some lengths to conceal the fact that the butcher had found the item stolen from the manor. If you thought he would be backward at coming forward, you were mistaken. Yeah, that was me. Happy to be of service to the law. Great lads. Do sterling service right enough. Tell you what, see the scum who took the stuff from her ladyship called Blesser? See that scum? Uh, scum! That's what they are! Hanging's too quick for him! Scum! So, what was it you wanted to know? Slightly terrified for your life, you're on the cusp of asking about the discovery he'd made. However, your cleaver-wielding friend has other things on his mind. See, they got me so upset, that scum, that I forgot what I was doing here. Makes me so angry, that does! Scum! For the sake of a quiet life, and the opportunity to live one, you offer to help. The butcher is trying to package his meats so that he can maximize their value. Can you group the meats in the most valuable way? Scum! Are you marvelous or moronic? On the button. All wrapped up already? Great heavens! With Neri, a hiccup. Well done. Olympian intelligence deserves an Olympian reward. The oozing packages put to one side you mentioned that you'd like to find out what the scum had taken that the butcher subsequently found. That's right, scum! Perfect word for him, scum! Nice to meet right-thinking folk. <laughs> now, what I had found that had come from her ladyship called Blesser. There was that walking stick with the handle screwed off. Clever that. Space inside for a little drinky, very civilized. <laughs> There was one of those Chinese puzzle boxes that someone had sold. Inscrutable, that. Oh, an old writing box thing with drawers everywhere. And some secret ones. All open. Yeah, that was all. You're obviously quite a tough. Understanding what them things were, what was taken. Scum! Gets me all up and bothered. Those scum stole from their betters. You give my regards to her ladyship, God bless her. Glad to be a service. Let her fight back against the scum! Maintaining eye contact at all times and making no sudden moves whatsoever, you flee the shop. Suddenly, the hotel manager seems almost sane. Well, don't do me any favors, will you? Sitting down to dine at the hotel, your hopes of a peaceful breakfast are soon dashed by the appearance of the manager. What time do you call this? Breakfast is from 7 to 8, and if it was any later, we'd have to start calling it lunch now, wouldn't we? 
Not that it matters, as it would seem that everything has already been eaten, so it'll just be tea for you this morning. Awfully sorry, never mind, oh, that's the time must dash. Goodbye! What a lovely man. Reminds me of that time I had a wart on my big toe. Still, tea is most efficacious. Gets the old brain cells going when you know what to do with it. Although you have the choice of coffee, tea, and milk, none of the pots have been properly labeled. Can you use the information to correctly label both the liquid and volume in each pot? you in a hurry. You made that look easy, not an error in sight. Look around you and be comforted. You are better than they. With the snippy manager out of the way, you settle down to lukewarm tea and a long look at the photograph you found at the windmill. Under a magnifying glass, a secret is revealed. That woman on the bench. It looks like Mrs. Gossip, albeit rather younger and less mentally impaired. You have a number of stops to make this morning, and this revelation adds yet another. Will Mrs. Gossip have sufficient control of her fallacious faculties to be able to help? And what does the hotel scarecrow want now? There was just... Sorry, scarecrow? Do you want this room? Anyway, the postman came by. He has a parcel for you. I've taken it in, but it was a vicious crow in reception. Apparently, I married her. Leaving the manager to flap, you depart. The hotel manager mentioned there'd been a package for you. Having arrived at the post office, you will discover why Little Riddle's post arrives with precise irregularity. The postman happily responds to your hail. Hello? Oh, where? Oh, oh, there you are. Hello, madam. Or is it sir? You try to explain to the supremely short-sighted postman that you believe an attempt was made to deliver a package. To the hotel, I remember. Now then, I put it... It was... Oh, it was a big letter thing. Where did I... Oh, oh, they've gone. That's odd. I didn't... You explain that you're still there. Can you help expedite the delivery at all? Oh, ah, quite a turn, you. Yeah, what? Yeah, oh, you can help. I... Are you still... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you are. Oh, it's one of these parcels. Um, oh, where have the labels gone? I can't see anything. Left my glasses around somewhere. While the myopic mole man searches for his ocular assistance, you take charge and hunt for your parcel. The postman thinks your package might have been mixed up with some others that are ready to be placed in a container and taken to the next town. Can you work out which parcel is yours by placing the others into the container?
Are you marvelous or moronic? That's the one. Great Scott, that was fast. Ooh, whoa! No mistakes made. Show off. Well done. Please take this moment to look as smug as possible. There you are. Did you get your... Oh, you did. Oh, glad to have been of service. Uh, we deliver. Can't say that we don't. You were about to open your correspondence when you noticed the letters F-M-F-Y-E-O written below the stamp. This is an official Blue Toad Agency letter and must be opened in a more private setting. It's time to leave. Sitting in the sun-kissed park, you feel a chill of excitement as you contemplate the letter before you. From Mother, for your eyes only. Opening it, you wonder what Mother, the head of Blue Toad's intelligence section, has sent that's so important. The parcel you received contains a scrap of newspaper with a puzzle to solve. Can you successfully complete the problem? Will the ducks reveal? On the button. Gosh, you got through that one. Lickety split. Oh, and aren't you the smug one? No mistakes. There are no words sufficient to describe your brilliance. Well, that was fun. But quite why Mother thought it would help your investigation is something you'll need to work out later. In the meantime, you must continue with your investigation. The time is coming when you will be asked who you think it was that robbed the manor. With all four suspects now known, and only a couple of places left to visit, it would please me to know that you have been paying attention. Let's see if you can answer these questions. Fantastic work! Your keen eye and attention to detail will serve you well. Let's continue with the investigation. I believe you have still to visit the manor and Mrs. Gossip. Since you cannot see the stolen items, you must rely on the descriptions of others to aid your investigation. The lady of the manor seems quite willing to talk about her missing property. However, something else is bothering her, and it seems only polite to deal with that first. It's the bees, you understand. Terribly good for the garden, I know, and with such an important job to do. Do try the French fancies, please. Cook does love to make them, though I find them a touch sweet. Now, where was I? Yes, the bees. I should so like to avoid them. Live and let live and all that. You offer to plot the bee presence in her garden, preferably without being stung. Oh, the 
manor's flowers attract bees, and the lady wants to work out where they all are. Can you use the rules to conclude where the bees must be? Now... did you do? Ah, spot on! Great Scott, that was fast! Ooh, whoa! No mistakes made. Show off. Olympian intelligence deserves an Olympian reward. Ah, capital! Now then. You wanted to know about the purloined objects. There was an 18th century writing bureau. Empty, of course. Haven't used that for years. My old puzzle box, too. I used to play with that with Nanny. Nothing going on inside, of course. Hmm, nor the box either. There was my cousin Bertie's walking stick, where he used to hide his whiskey when he thought no one knew. Very sad end. Oh, and that charming Prometheus statue. A real family favorite, that one. So evocative, his arms down so he could marvel at the flames held in his hands. So many have Prometheus reaching up for the four, but this story is in the possession of the flames, don't you think? I do hope that's of some use to you. Now, do excuse me, I have a eulogy to write for the departed mayor. Did you pick up any discrepancies between the butchers and the ladies' descriptions of the stolen items? Are things becoming clearer to you now? More questions need answered elsewhere. Having seen Mrs. Gossip in full flow, you find her slightly less vociferous on this visit. Oh, I'm sorry, dearie. It's almost time for my afternoon nap. <laughs> <laughs> now then, what was it I could do for you? <sighs> you quickly show the old dear the photograph you found at the windmill. You ask who it is that she is sitting, watching. Mr. Fluffykins. That not being the answer you were expecting, you press further. Oh, I can't get comfortable without Mr. Fluffykins. <sighs> Would you fetch him for me? It's just over there. Mrs. Gossip indicates a chair behind you, and abruptly the fog clears. Mr. Fluffykins is a bear. However, it seems Mrs. Gossip has a great many bears. Hopefully she can guide you to the one she wants. Mrs. Gossip is trying to find her Mr. Fluffykins, her favorite teddy bear. Can you use her information to work out which one he is? See how you did. On the button. You're finished. That was quick. Oh, and aren't you the smug one? No mistakes. My, aren't you terribly talented? Well done. There you are, you naughty boy. <laughs> now then, your picture. Now that was, oh, that was a long time ago. 
That was quite the catch back then. <laughs> Do you know that hey, that's him over there by the saddler, not the fool. Oh, well, let's not get into that. <laughs> Who's she? <laughs> oh, yes, I remember. She was married to that awful man, died young, quite um oh, quite awful. She oh, she <laughs> This is, perhaps, something to come back to another day. You have all the evidence you need now to solve at least one of the crimes committed in Little Riddle. Hurrying to the police station, you stand before Inspector Bragg. Well, don't just stand there. Do you have some great insight to share with us mere mortals? Hell with it! Sharpish? You have four suspects. The vicar certainly seems to have an agenda of his own. Could it involve burglary? Moses seems to have something against the weeds in the gardens of the manor. What or whom does he consider needs cutting back? The colonel seems to have his eyes set on the prize at the manor. Is he the type to play the waiting game, or is he one for helping himself a little early? We only have the butcher's word that he found all the items. Did he chicken out at the last minute and try covering his tracks? Four suspects, but only one is guilty. Lady Justice points the finger very firmly in one direction. Who is the burglar? Can you deduce the culprit and prove yourself worthy of your role as a blue toad detective? Player one, you get to choose first. Select your villain by pressing the corresponding button on the controller. One of your four suspects has been betrayed by their own carelessness. That person was... Moses! When you visited him, one of the missing items was there in his shack. Lady Snobbish and the Butcher gave differing descriptions of the stolen objects. The one the Butcher missed out, the statue of Prometheus, was in Moses' shack. Right, let's just say no one had better get shot this time. All right. Constable, get the lads. I want this here Moses surrounded for his own safety. All right. Let's go get him. Sharpish, sir? Exactly. Sharpish. You used your talents to select the correct suspect. Many congratulations on a job well done. What's this haul about then, eh? By haul accounts, you've been here for years. Why are you suddenly nicking things, eh? Hmm. You won't understand. Can't understand. Don't you try that with me. Who do you think you're dealing with? I'm not here to have you try and pull that rubbish. Help with it. Sharpish. Hmm. I can't. Not good. Enough. Why did you keep the statue? Mm, can't. Why did you keep the statue? Tell us! It's all he needed. All he wanted. Mm, and that's all I care about. Now don't ask me questions no more. I'm saying nothing. He'd want it that way, see? And that's that. Once again, you solve a mystery and little riddle. Seeing off one quandary, only to be faced with one even greater than the last. Who is he? Will you convince Moses to tell you more? How is this tied into the murders of the miller and the mayor? 
What is so important about the statue of Prometheus? Will the blue toad file on this benighted village ever be closed? Can you pierce the veil of crime and corruption that smothers little riddle when we return to the darkening streets once more in The Mystery of the Concealing Flame? So, how well did you do in that episode? Player one, divine detecting. 